Hello listeners and welcome to another episode of That's F and Weird. I am one of your co-hosts, Ro. I'm Leo. I'm Alex. I'm Missy. And I'm Tristan. And the topic is Illuminati and I'm going to start off with the history of the society. So more than 200 years after the Illuminati was founded to oppose religious influences over daily life, it is... and has become one of world's biggest conspiracy theories which is the topic for this month illuminati has a vast history and goes back as far as 1700s and the definition of illuminati by itself means enlightened and guys right off the bat i want to tell you the reason or the foundation of illuminati was pretty much simple and straightforward nothing crazy going on there so the society or the order of illuminati was founded by a professor of law adam weishaupt on 1st may 1776 in a city named ingolstadt i apologize if i ruin the pronunciations and um fans of uh, mary shelley's novel frankenstein would know this place because i think this novel is based out of there um uh, any any one of you frankenstein fans it's been a while no? but i've, I've read it yeah. i'm <laughs> familiar with the story <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you know that it was uh, the setting was here yeah are you I did also I, I also heard another name for the illuminati is like you said it's like the illuminated ones is what it's supposed to mean as well yes the enlightened ones or the illuminated ones so adam's idea was you know this was supposed to be a secret society formed to oppose religious influence on on society and the abuse of power by the state and the idea was to you know sort of provide a safe a safe space for debate or you know a free speech or even some sort of criticism which wasn't available and you're making this seem like it's a great organization and they have nothing to hide and like everything <laughs> that i've heard about the illuminati is the complete the opposite row exactly. that's how they start that's how they which start is, they want you to know that we're good people which is here. why i gave the disclaimer guys the foundation of illuminati was pretty oh. much simple okay <laughs> so yes coming coming to the next point so adam was highly influenced by the freemasons so yeah there, there, there you go and uh, he also believed that our society should not be dictated by just religious virtues there should be a state of liberty and moral equality you know where knowledge is concerned it should not be restricted and i personally feel that this was very brave as well as quite modern of the professor and see i will call it as brave because this is the 1700s right religion is still continuing to shape societies in europe the uh, even the universities uh, were christian established including the one where adam was teaching uh, whatever was being taught was strictly monitored and religion had a huge political influence so yes it was quite brave of him to kind of have a thought process which enables others to have that kind of a conversation what do you guys think yeah i no i would i would 100% agree with that the fact that like you know trying to establish something i think it's across the board though like at any time when you start going against the system i mean it takes yes. you know a little bit of guts to do something like that so yeah Absolutely. i would agree and i think it's interesting that it has ties to like freemasons and also makes you wonder about other secret organizations like uh Skull and Bones, Freemasons, the Templars. Maybe there's well, there, some different connections. They're yeah, the Illuminate, Illuminati, it's become like a catch-all phrase. There are different factions within all these secret societies, and it even goes into like intelligence agencies, right? And the government. So yeah. 
everybody starts out with the best of intentions. I mean, you never know. We could all come out really diabolical one day. Okay. Not on that's <laughs> effing weird. No. <laughs> <laughs> we are cat crazy, alien believing, chapstick disbelieving <laughs> folks. <laughs> yeah. Great way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, this obviously started off small with, you know, Adam kind of choosing and handpicking top five of his most talented law students. Um, But again, this grew rapidly, obviously, because the members were spreading Adam's goals of enlightenment uh, with radical teachings. And at that point of time, I think it was quite fascinating for people uh, because there was a change, um, something that they could speak about. Although it was in secrecy, but I think that, I don't know, is, is that human nature to, you know, when, when the government, it's like a small child, right? A human child, when you say no, that is when a child goes and, you know, catches that thing and something like that. I think that's human nature, irrespective of age. They had this government mandate and, you know, religious teachings that they shouldn't be kind of defying. And when this came up, I, it, it just spread. And uh, it also kind of created an elaborate network of informants who were part of the state and religious groups. And they, in turn, reported back these behaviors from the state and religious groups, which, I guess, helped Illuminati build a wealth of information about the doings of the religious um, and religious groups and and the state, obviously. So also, uh, the society targeted people of wealth and social importance. And I'm sure, Alex, you'll be covering this. Uh, A number of notable figures are associated with the Illuminati. I think the most prominent one during this time was a German um, diplomat, I guess, and his name was Baron Adolf Franz Friedrich. And he actually helped uh, recruit from the Freemason lodges to kind of help the Illuminati cause. So the, this group eventually, at that point of time, grew more than 2,000 members throughout Bavaria, Poland, Italy. Hungary, and I guess France, among other places. Again, the idea was not for the Illuminati to be noticed. It was never meant to be noticed. The, but again, the organization didn't kind of evade the establishment for long. Uh, just, I guess, a decade after its creation, The secret society was infiltrated by the Bavarian uh, authorities after its radical, you know, radical, I'm just putting quotes because at that point it was radical, anti-state writings were intercepted by the government authorities. And the Illuminati was, I guess, shut down or disbanded. And Adam was banished from Ingolstadt and he was sent to live the rest of his life to a small town in Germany, which was like 300 kilometers to the north. So my point is, Adam probably just wanted to change the society, change the way of thinking. He was probably dreaming of a better world. But I guess people were not so open about changing or they were happy with what they had. Well, he was a mystic, wasn't he? And we're talking about mysticism versus religion. Um, that, that that was my, and I could be wrong, but that was my understanding that they were producing these esoteric ideas and that didn't really sit well with the church. Tristan, in any of your research, did you find anything like that? No, nothing specific about that. Um, I, I kind of look at more of this stuff from the cultural aspect, like what was going on around it. Um, cause you're talking the enlightenment. So it, it, they got a little bit more post that, but it, it, it's, it's around that era. And also if you look at like what's happening in governments at this time, um, just things are changing. 
Like you're coming out of you're what about a hundred years removed from the English Civil War, which was just <laughs> a very uh, big political upheaval where you're starting to actually give power away from monarchs to more people, and those ideas are kind of starting to spread. But once you kind of start diverging from that church and state model that was so prevalent, um, it almost becomes like a rich novelty is how it comes off to me. Um, yeah. Like a bunch of people that with a bunch of money that are bored, they're like, well, we're never going to quite be the king. So let's kind of make our own secret society <laughs> and like down with the system. And they're all just kind of wearing like ACDC T-shirts and shit trying to bring down the man. But they're I just those rich, too. wealthy guys. I, I don't know. That's just how it kind of comes off to me with at least the original version um, mm -hmm. before it, it kind of gets more into the conspiracy, more the modern interpretation of it. But back then it was just like a collection of guys with too much money and not enough to do. That makes sense. I think, too, that, like, I think it's human nature to want to belong. Mm -hmm. So I think that it was kind of easy for people that didn't like what was maybe going on to be a part of a group, you know, have that sense of belonging that maybe a have the same views. I mean, again, <clears throat> I'll cover this more in in my topic um, that I covered, but joining the Illuminati now is a lot more difficult maybe than it was back then because what you were saying Ro, was uh, they were just hand picking people where like nowadays it's a little bit different i can't wait to tell you guys the two ways to join it's pretty cool yeah. but they did have I'll, a facebook I'll, I'll page that. back then <laughs> yeah, they had Come pigeons <laughs> <laughs> actually speaking oh. on that's actually a decent pigeon thing. Well, you also got to remember this is when information started to finally be able to spread. Mm, uh, it's uh -huh. an interesting time in history because you, know, you have the printing press around and not just that, they're more efficient because it wasn't even the, the original version. It was something where you could actually post material and get it to people around the world in a way you were never able to do before. Um, yeah. So it made it possible for societies like this, secret societies like this to exist in different places. And it's all like Eastern Europe, you said, right? Like it's all in that Germany kind of area. It doesn't really get any more West than France. Um, so for them to be able to pass information like that allowed something like this to happen. I think even the eye of providence um, is, is taken from one of the ceilings. Not one of the ceilings. I guess there should be only one ceiling. In uh, Ingolstadt's uh, Maria de Victoria Church. So I'll put up a picture here and you guys can see it. So what? So describe this again, Ro. So the Eye of Providence, which is, um, I think, uh, quite a major sign of Illuminati. Can you see that trial on top? Right on top. There's an eye, right? And that symbol is always associated with the Illuminati. I think the, this this symbol is on some notes as well. Was it on, on US currency? Was it? Yeah, it's on, it's, yeah, it's yeah. on our currency. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Every stoner in high school, that's the first thing they learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you know that there's an all-seeing eye on the dollar bill, man? <laughs> I think there's something related to the Beyonce concert as well, but then I'll leave it to someone who's earlier who's covering the conspiracy. But yeah, the idea of a secret society, again, revolting against the state, obviously captured imagination and um, the conspiracy theorists obviously um, believe that Illuminati has never disbanded. Um, it has been widely debunked by historians, um, but Conspiracy theorists, again, they feel that the organization has been covertly working behind the scenes. So, according to them, Illuminati is responsible right from the French Revolution to the assassination of the U.S. President John F. Kennedy, even the 9-11 terror attacks. And obviously, I think we have to thank Dan Brown to bring Illuminati in media through books and the movie Angels and Demons. Well, something that you'd brought up, Ro, was like the whole Beyonce thing. I feel like it's really like I, I feel like I've been seeing it a lot lately. Like, what was it? Even Elon Musk's mom was like mm -hmm. a, a, supposedly a part of the Illuminati or something like that. Because like, she, I guess she had like a photo shoot or something. Leo, I don't know if you're going to cover this, like what Ro said. But 
I don't yeah. want, but I, I mean, I will talk about that, the celebrity aspect a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm, I'm just going to shut up then. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you have, bro? Or is that pretty much the, all the encompassing history of the Illuminati as far as like yes. where it started? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, that's all I had. And I, when I came to the conspiracy part, I really wanted to hear <laughs> like how does one go from uh, a society meant to divide knowledge equally and have a safe space to to this Beyonce concert? <laughs> <laughs> well, Leo, please inform us. How does this happen? <laughs> yes. So, of course, as we mentioned, the biggest conspiracy in the world is the Illuminati. And there's a few different, I guess, talking tables on it. The biggest and most common is that the Illuminati is like a shadow government or like, you know, like a behind the scenes kind of puppet master sort of deal, pulling the strings, influencing everybody and then trying to to implant their agenda through celebrities, through figureheads like presidents, through music, through television, education, all sorts of different media. And so one of the big things that big talking points about it is how like a lot of the presidents, prime ministers and other people of power are nothing but like figureheads or puppets to help push along whatever agenda they have the illuminati has going at the at the moment and you got to think about it too like if I've, something i found interesting is how like a lot of the u.s presidents are in some way or another related like one president like barack obama and I think it's Hillary. Yeah, they're like distant cousins or something like that. What? And then if you can keep, yeah, like no, just look no, it up. Are all not. the presidents related? Yes. <laughs> just look it There's up. There's no one. You gotta what? look it up. They're like okay. distant relatives. Like I got all the way out. down the line. They're right. from like fourth cousin removed to like their great 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 grandpa. There's a is useful Alex's. charts video on YouTube. Great channel. But it's a it's something called useful charts, and he breaks down how all of the presidents are for the most part related in one way or another by yeah. either marriage or blood. Yeah, I don't know. I was just gonna say I think there is at least one or like a few exceptions, and of course they were yeah, killed. Like I think few. JFK is is one of them, or like other presidents that weren't fitting their because yeah, he upset too the well. establishment by being yeah. independently wealthy from what about bootlegging? <laughs> yeah. So Wait, I guess did you this, say they are related by blood? Trin? But, but no, um, well, there's a lot of them that are. There's a lot of uh, presidents that are, or a lot of them that, if they're not related by blood, they are related by marriage in some way. Or if you're yeah. FDR, you just marry your cousin. <laughs> yeah. What in the Game of Thrones <laughs> happening here? <laughs> yeah, FD, didn't you know that Mar FDR married his, I think it's his first cousin. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah Eleanor Roosevelt? Yes. Yeah, they knew each other when they were kids. That's how they met. Yeah. Yeah. At a family dinner. Yep. At a family dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They didn't have <laughs> Tinder back in the day, dude. They had <laughs> yeah. family dinners. What? Oh, man. Wait, I thought Tinder's been around from like the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> Not the special version. <laughs> so, another part of the conspiracy is how a lot of like celebrities, uh, artists, actors, and anyone else that has some kind of influence, and even possibly some social media people, we don't know. But they are further like down the hierarchy of puppets of the Illuminati that are used to push their agenda, which is why they're part of the reason why like a lot of these trends come out or a lot of these different styles or, you know, popular thing that was being mentioned is how they like to do the the whole triangle and the eye thing. You see that a lot with the... Uh, with celebrities and photos and in videos and music videos and stuff like that. And even in movies, they, you know, drop the, the whole joke of pyramid. Or the okay symbol over the eyeball. Yeah. The like, symbol. or this, yeah. the three, the that's, that's three it. symbols. They do that that's a lot. It. Okay. Really? That means half of yeah. India belongs to Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's the, that's the conspiracy. That's the joke about it, about the, about the Illuminati conspiracy. It's like, but yeah, that's why they make the joke of like people will make pyramids and shows or be subtle with showing like pyramids and stuff. And it'd be like, ah, pyramid confirm, you know, Illuminati confirmed. That's where that whole joke comes from is because of the all seeing eye and it's pyramid. I mean, there's only so many shapes that people can like do. I mean, like, and sometimes it's a people, meme. 
It's yeah. a meme at this point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's a Dorito. It's Illuminati. Com- you know, Illuminati <laughs> the internet did not help with this conspiracy theory at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't. Yeah. I think but, there was a Doritos commercial with Frankie Muniz way back in the 90s <laughs> with like the 3D Doritos and it had something oh, to man. do with the Illuminati. Yeah. Yeah. But speaking more on celebrities, uh, they also, there's also this idea that they use celebrities and like celebrity feuds or drama going on with celebrities that people are so caught up with to distract us from other events going on in the world, which one of the more recent ones, of course, I'm sure everybody's heard about this Johnny Depp case and versus his, yeah, that whole ordeal is apparently a cover up because the Epstein case is also ongoing. And then you also have the events that's going on in China where apparently they're locking people in their apartments, not letting them out, not getting them food. So people are literally jumping off buildings, yes. ending their life because they're not letting them out. And like that happening I and mean, coinciding with the Johnny Depp case, it's like nobody's speaking about the other events. They're so caught up with, you know, oh, Johnny Depp won and there's this whole ordeal and oh, we need to protect, support him, whatever. So it's like every time there's something big going on in the world, there's a celebrity feud to cover it up. Yeah. So the timing is done in such a way so that people don't pay attention to these things. Like the the whole Flint Wild, Flint, Michigan issue. I think there was some celebrity feud going on at that point that covered it up. And even going further back, there's always been something that coincide with this. And that's just part of the conspiracy of the Illuminati doing that to kind of cover up people's eyes over what's really going on in the world. Or do you maybe think that things are always going on all the time and people just want to bury their heads in the sand? Okay, Mr. Yeah, could be it. You know, it could be. I'm could just be saying, Oscars. I think that's much more likely that just there's always celebrity shit and someone is always doing something nefarious at all times and most people just don't want to think about it. Yeah. That's possible. I mean, it is just a conspiracy, you know? It, I mean, it's an idea. That doesn't mean a conspiracy isn't valid. I, think, I mean, we just have more access to information now. People have always been doing it. You know, Leo... Uh, Sorry, going back to this sign, um, the OK sign. I mean, this is what half of India does whenever you ask them, are you, like, how are you? Good. How's the food? Excellent. How's your child? <laughs> Doing well. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the crazy <laughs> thing, too. It's like, this is universal AOK symbol. And it's also, yeah. I understand, a mudra for meditation. So it's like, yes. come on now. But... I know what y'all gonna say once I bring up this next point. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so it's another like a thing child. that Illuminati is <laughs> it's a child. <laughs> it's a child. Another, th- <laughs> another thing the Illuminati is associated with is a lot of the rituals and things that they do to pretty much live forever. So some of which involves like kidnapping and stuff to transfer organs, and then of course kidnapping of what of who children, <laughs> 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 of children. Yep. If, if Leo crumb. is speaking about kidnapping, it's obviously children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kidnapping and sa- satanic rituals and stuff for either or that and as well as like celebrities selling selling their souls for fame and fortune and all of that and like missy was saying they they'll drain their adrenal chrome and use that to help them with living forever and stuff it's it's a whole mess that was actually in the johnny Depp movie fear and, fear and living in las vegas they were i've never yeah <laughs> Missy, didn't you bring this up last episode too? As far as the like the conspiracies did. around yes. that, so yeah, yeah. So I had to br- slip that in somehow, some way. <laughs> <laughs> the <Okay>. children. <laughs> yeah, I mean they bathe in their blood apparently too. Isn't what? It? Well, also, then, yeah, if, some... you to, if you want to cause outrage, like maybe to uh, influence a election. Then you you go to children. The children are being hurt. These people are hurting the children, right? Because that, who gets more outraged about anything more than they do children being hurt? Now, if that wasn't strange, the next thing is something that's effing weird. So the idea is that the Illuminati isn't actually human. They're actually a group of shape-shifting reptilians that have assumed yes. the roles of presidents, of other... I was wondering big, how long it'd take <laughs> us to get there. Yeah. Big figureheads, and that they've infiltrated the government. They're in places of position of power throughout the world. And they also eat children, so... Oh, no. Yeah, kids aren't safe. <laughs> <Got the laughs> no matter children. what, kids are not safe. But, Hello, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> I mean, they, they do look kind of... 
you know, kind of, kind of, kind of. Did you did you guys see that thing rolling around Reddit recently where it's like him messing up talking about being a human? Yes. Like back when I was yes. a human, and yeah. he's talking to like a bunch yes. of kids, and they're all just like, "What the hell is happening?" I mean, I am. Or a like, human. have y'all seen the videos of like <laughs> news reporters and stuff with their eyes changing or like the glitch? Yeah, the flashy yeah. thing. Yeah. I feel like the whole like eye changing thing is something just like with camera, or it's just like yeah, it, like. Too. Damn. It's just a camera glitch. It's not like actual them, like you know, like it's not. Yeah, I feel like someone would notice too, and they'd get like fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know because if it's in a news like broadcast setting, it, it's very controlled. They could just be them and whoever's in on it. I don't know. Well, we know the queen is a total dinosaur. How is she even still alive? All right, that's <laughs> true. That's yeah, yeah. And speaking more into. The reptilian side. You also think about the phenomenon known as the men in black, how they be looking kind of weird and usually around, you know, presidents and stuff and pop up during UFO sightings and things like that. And phone calls. They make they make phone calls too. Have y'all heard the Gary Sedbrink story? I'll bring that up another time. But yeah. <laughs> men in black yeah. look weird. They're like robots or something. Right. They usually like like emotion. They're bald and wear glasses and stuff. It's very creepy. One guy said that he, uh, one of them shows up at his house and he's talking as, as he's talking. His speech gets slower and slower. He wipes his mouth and lipstick comes off and he's like, I've got to go. I'm running low on energy. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like the, I feel like that's me at work when it hits like <laughs> five o'clock. I gotta go home. <laughs> I was like, so you're telling me that the men in black work in call centers. <laughs> yeah. That's a note on me. Take a note there, okay. <laughs> yeah, so talking about media, you know how The Simpsons likes the, they say The Simpsons is like predictive programming or exposing us to mm-hmm. what's happening. Well, the idea is that that is actually being used to influence the masses to make that come true. So like the collective conscious is made to believe something enough to where it does actually happen. So instead of The Simpsons predicting stuff, they're actually creating stuff through our collective conscious power yeah so like the the okay the consciousness of the collective like the entire human race we see it and then we believe it and then we create it so they're basically weaponizing our own consciousness against us that's the that's the conspiracy but it makes sense and it's not just with tv shows it's also with music because oh my gosh i got i dove deep into this whole idea but apparently there's like a certain frequency that all music has to be at and that frequency is supposed to be like one that disturbs or disrupts human behavior and like brings us down a lot of the time. So that would be 441 hertz, right? And it's yeah, to- I think that's it. Yeah. As opposed to like the more, what's the word, like beneficial or positive one, which I think is like 418 or something like that. The healing, the 432, um, the, the healing yeah. frequency. They play music at 440 to be more damaging on us as, as humans and to influence us in such a way where it like, it dulls us down. It makes us kind of slower in our processing power. It keeps us well, in a sheep mentality. Yeah, back when I like Mozart. Yeah, back when Mozart, Amadeus, and all that, when Bach, all them, their music, the frequency was not like four forty hertz. It was four forty four thirty two. I might be getting my numbers mixed up, but I don't think. No, so. that's right. I think it's four forty yeah. is like the negative, and four thirty two is the positive. And like that's to become the standard in all the music industry. Like it has to be out of. 440 hertz but there are some that went against it like (laughs) it's a standard tuning measurement for base c see tristan the same one tristan (laughs) yeah explain that in layman's terms please yeah no i had a guitar player that was obsessed with this concept Mm -hmm. um so he made us tune all of our shit to like a like base a was different than the base a you'd use on a standard tuner the reason everything's tuned the same is for standardization so everybody can tune the same and sound the mm-hmm. same. So all tuners are, I think it's 440 if I'm not, it's 440 or 441, one of the two. It's been a while since I've messed with it. But they all have a standardized set so that way when you hear an A note, it's the same exact frequency to a T across the board. So you can all tune together and sound the same and everything has a consistency to it. That started back... Um, in the classical era of music, because before then, everything was just tuned by ear, like, to whatever. Like, nothing meant anything. It was just chaos. 
Um, and they slowly started to kind of figure out how keys work and how frequencies relate to each other, things like that. And I had a guitar player that was obsessed with like going, I, f- I forget what frequency range he did, but it was all about making it sound more metal and shit <laughs> yeah. just to make it heavier sounding. It'd be like, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to mess with people's minds like on a spiritual level, like that kind of shit. <laughs> That's diabolical. I don't find any effect from it at all, personally. I, I, I messed with the concept before to see, because there's also stuff like if you do certain frequencies between like the ears and you close your eyes, if they're offset just enough, you can make someone basically trip nuts. Like, yeah, I've never been able to make it work. I've never been able to have anything where any of that matters at all. But a lot of people believe in it. But I, I personally think it's a mind, a mind thing. Like if someone tells you this frequency is going to heal you, it, it might actually heal you, but it's just Placebo your brain effect. believing yeah. it will. Yeah, I, I really think a lot of it's that. But it's it's an interesting thing of music, um, especially when you deal with low frequencies, because low mm-hmm. frequencies can really start to mess with your head, um, especially subsonic ones. If you go low enough and like to where you can't hear it, certain frequencies will actually cause unease. Um, they use it as like police control sometimes, where they pump this super sub frequency at people, and it basically causes you to like panic and freak out. Yeah. And it'll make people like scatter. Yeah, that's yeah. like a they- interesting sound. I also know something that's a bit off topic, but uh, with like horror movies, they'll have it to where like they'll play up to a certain note and then stop. And that just like bothers us because it's not yeah. complete. And so yep. <laughs> they use that to also add that unsettling feeling whenever you're watching movies and the, the soundtrack is done a certain way. Like it makes it even more intense for us because we want that note to be finished, but they don't. So it's like the inner. Uh, or you play two notes that are right next yeah, to each other. Like because the, um, the way do, 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 they vibrate. Yeah. Yeah. It's so <laughs> conflicting. It, it hurts. Like think the strings from Psycho. Like, burr, burr, yeah. Burr, that thing. It's just two notes right next to each other played at the same time. And your body freaking hates it. Your mind is just like that note should be the other note. Don't do that. And then it just makes you super uncomfortable. I actually jam out to that in the morning. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like it. confirmed. What the Psycho soundtrack? It's going to be your playlist. <laughs> <laughs> Alex in the shower just ah. la, la, la. <laughs> Oh who's that behind the sheets? Oh hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Change it mm. <laughs> But I don't know, I think that's an interesting concept, especially when you think about the science behind, you know, humans being at the core, like vibrations and stuff. So it's like, does music influence us? Mm. I don't know. But like it was mentioned earlier, they also conf- uh, the ideas that the Illuminati are responsible for a lot of like tragic events and false flag, you know, events like the 9-11 or uh, JFK assassination, even uh, Prince Diana assassination and other like celebrities getting killed off because they were bound to speak on exposing, you know, exposing the Illuminati, exposing the truth about what was going on in the industries and stuff. Or the more recent ones I heard, it was, uh, what was it Chester Bennington and... Mm. About Chris Cornell. Yeah. Uh, my heart. I, I, you didn't hear about those uh-huh. ones? Uh, oh, those were ones that were, they thought were Illuminati ones because it didn't make any sense why they killed themselves. And they were probably just depressed people. But um, yeah, that was a, that was one of the more recent ones I've heard. Because, you know, the, the Di- Princess Diana and the JFK and all those ones, those are a little bit more famous. But I think the more modern interpretations, um, I just think they're more interesting. And I think humans yeah. will, I mean, what, a lot of times there's nothing there, but we've got to make sense of it, right? So if, you, if there's not really a problem. Right, humans naturally look for patterns. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is all to say that this is just one group's effort to, to instill what they call the new world order, which, you know, one currency, one group calling the shots and no freedom. Nobody gets to express themselves anymore. Yeah, that's their ultimate goal. But I guess it has to, I mean, I guess like with Rose said, where it started off like, oh, fight the power. We got to do this because for the people. But it's like they say power, absolute uh, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. So maybe they've accumulated so much power that it's just world domination, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. I don't get that. That that always confuses me. It's just like, why do people want to destroy the world or like dominate the world? Like, what does that benefit anybody? <laughs> that's, I don't, I, I'll, I, I never, I don't that's always my biggest issue with these things. Is just like, what's the fucking point? Well, you they know look the, down on you. <laughs> they think they're better. I think I'm better than my dog, but I still love her. <laughs> well, what, how does she feel about that? <laughs> she, uh, she's just eating some salmon food and she's just happy as all. She's going to get her going to walk later. It's great life for her. But if someone from the Illuminati is listening, we 
or rather i would want them to use leo's tagline world domination world domination <laughs> world domination messy <laughs> hmm. what what do you believe leo uh, you, you did the most research into him what what's what's your stance i think this is just one of those things where it kind of just got blown out of proportion like i don't think that there is one specific organization rule in the world i think there's multiple <laughs> no nah, but yeah i think there's just more to more it reasonable, yeah <laughs> I think there's just more to it, you know, than what meets the eye. Like, there's definitely something out there that's calling the shots that we just don't know nothing about. But what can we do? Make podcasts. Podcasts. (laughs) Make podcasts. (laughs) As long as they ain't bothering us, so we can make our podcast just fine. Ro, is there anything like this in India? Is like there is there any sort of like secret organization similar to like this that you know of? Do you know the population of India, Alex? <laughs> a few people Can't there. Be that many, right? There's a few. <laughs> really? We are the second largest population, right behind China. Oh. Do you think anything is going to be a secret here? Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, in other words, America is just, not America. U.S. is just fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so something that i covered um was how to join the group and then also some of the prominent figures within the illuminati um so where i'm gonna start is how to join the illuminati all right so it's it's a wiki pal (laughs) <laughs> what's that as a there's like a wiki how page like how they have how to tie your shoe and stuff oh, <laughs> Just man, how to join Illuminati. fun little animations and like cartoons in it. Oh, man, <laughs> yeah. so to join the illuminati it's as simple as going to www.illuminatiofficial.org ah, okay yeah, yeah. yeah everyone's doing it <laughs> So you're gonna do you yep, mind so repeating that? It's w <laughs> www.illuminatiofficial.org. Mm-hmm. You know, it's official because they say official in the name, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Right. And they have a Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, they have Google account. Um, wow. yeah, you're Twitter gonna get verified the, though. Ah, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. That'll be something that we have to check up on. But there's like it's a great website. You uh, if you go to join the Illuminati, it's on the far right. All you I'm do is you t- <laughs> are we all are we all joining the Illuminati right now? I'm well, good. I'm, you guys yeah. do you. I mean, take one for the team and infiltrate, right? Someone has to. The- <laughs> I said, I'm going to take one for the team and infiltrate. Someone has to. <laughs> But yeah, you just uh, you submit your information. So you just type in your email address and your first name. You agree to the policies. Now, I haven't read the agree to policies yet. So that might have some sneaky stuff in there. Um, maybe if we it's- find something between now and when this releases, we can toss it up in the social media. Um, for like our, our department, like for the Illuminati, if they have policies, they have to have someone to enforce them. They have a I'm contact a pa- us. They have a contact I'm us. <laughs> I'm in. The- <laughs> I, I just have to confirm my email when they send it. <laughs> but I, I want to read this part. So I don't know when it looks old, like how this is written, but it says all people in all places are eligible to apply for the Illuminati membership. Um, initials are not required to make any vows of loyalty and may remove themselves from our membership at any time without no, without no repercussions. So see, see this, they, the, the fact that they provided or they have written this line <laughs> is suspicious. Yes. Right. If you, if you can go without any repercussions, they shouldn't have specified it. Exactly. So you can look around on the web page. <clears throat> it has like an about us um, with their purpose um, and all of that. Well, let's see here. What else do they have? Uh... I'm looking at the testimonies. Please, if, if anyone is on the website, please go and read it. 
I haven't found a bunch of more enlightened folks than these. Like, <laughs> what is this? The Illuminati has pointed me in the direction to start my path of enlightenment. For that, I am beyond grateful. The Illuminati is not just changing my life. We are changing mankind. That sounds like a what? pyramid scheme. Well, in this <laughs> kind of feature, I mean, why not would it not be? This kind of goes back to what Leo was saying with like a one world type thing with the, the testimonies that you just read, uh, Ro, it seems like, ah, enlightenment, we're all going to be one and everything like that. So it's kind of weird. <laughs> but yeah, if you're listening, you want to join the Illuminati, it's as simple as going to IlluminatiOfficial.org. Now, caveat on that. According to ParanormalKnowledge.com, it's a little bit more difficult to join. So there are roughly like 18, 18 things that you can do to increase your chance to become a part of the Illuminati. Now, what this website does, I feel like breaks it down into like a more legit what the Illuminati is looking for. I feel like the the website that I just mentioned was almost like what Roe had brought up at the very beginning. It was like a, hey, join our group in like a sense of belonging. That's what I think this website is kind of designed for. Whereas the real Illuminati, this is what you kind of have to do. They broke it down. So uh, you have to take the long view of things. Be patient. So that's step number one. Be patient. Uh, the Illuminati is nothing else. If it's nothing else, patient, it's patience with the goal of world domination. Um, another thing that you can do is start your own form of an Illuminati group that models the same stuff as the actual Illuminati. Um, get your degree at Harvard and join the Skull and Bones Society or the Pen and Quill. Uh, let's see here. What are some other things that you can do? Study the mysterious religion and cult practices. Um, let's see here. Build a group of quote unquote slaves for legal reasons. It's best that these relationships be consensual um, for the <laughs> dominance and submission of community. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Yeah. Do that so one again. We're in parentheses, is it sacrifice your firstborn? <laughs> yeah. Just an yeah. asterisk. Push with, a, oh, push, by the way. Yeah. Push a virgin down the volcano. Yeah, yeah, there's that. Um, <laughs> openly become a member of the Christian, what is it called, clergy, while secretly holding some cult practices. Oh, uh, let's see clergy, here. What's another? That's okay. What's up? It's literally, one of the things is join the clergy. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then it said, like, wrapping this all up, said, most of all, just be patient. You can only join the Illuminati after years of consistent uh, demonstration of your wealth. And then this could take decades to accomplish. So when I go into like the prominent figures of the Illuminati or some of the supposed members of the Illuminati, it'll make a little bit more sense because the whole wealth thing, they apparently the Illuminati is looking for really wealthy people. Um, it is said that I don't know if anyone else found this but there's really only 13 families that are in the illuminati so that's what I found. And... what's up missy that's that's what i found yeah yep and then leo what were you saying i was just saying i know one of them is like the rothschild and i think um people over jp morgan bank like a lot of the banking owners families or whatever are are part of it and other yep. families of wealth Yep. Yeah. Yep. So now I will get into some of the prominent figures. One of them, uh, Roe had already mentioned, is uh, Baron Eldoff von uh, Nyig. It's K N I G G E. Um, he was crucial <clears throat> in expanding the order of the Illuminati from five members to more than a thousand. And this was back when you said the 1700s, correct, Roe? Yes. Yes. So he was a, he was pretty influential as far as making this group grow to what it kind of is now. But again, it is said that there's only 13 
families associated with it. But what Leo had said, apparently Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton are related. So, like, I guess, <laughs> I guess there's maybe a lot it's an of more extensive people. family. <laughs> yeah. Um, he ended up. Um, Baron actually ended up leaving uh, because there was conflicts within the Illuminati when it first started. Apparently, so whatever that may mean, he left for that reason. But he also implemented hierarchy with degrees classes and then the secret symbolic names uh his was filio so again one of the uh founders or you know one of the first people to join the group he's pretty prominent uh next person is albert pike uh he was the one responsible for the concept of the new world order now that's something kind of that we had touched touched on a little bit with both leo and Rose um, talking points, but he set up a blueprint essentially. And it's, I think most people will agree that like, that's kind of the concept of the Illuminati today is that the new world. I mean, I hear it all the time, like on the news and like in the conspiracy things is like the, the new world order. They're coming for everybody and they're trying to like set everything up. <clears throat> so he, uh, he yeah, the deep state and everything. So, but Albert Pike was, he was around in the order in the 1800s. So there was about a year gap. Um, I'm I'm sure there was more important figures within the Illuminati, but it kind of jumps around a little bit. But 1800s, Albert Pike, he's the one who created that new world order concept. Um, going on, we have Edward um, Man- Mandel. And he was the founder of the, what was it? The Council of Foreign Relations in 1921. So jump ahead and again, another hundred years. And he created this specifically to destroy. Now this is all speculation, but he created this specifically to destroy the U.S. U.S.'s freedom and independence from the inside out. Again, kind of with that concept of the, the new world order and everything like that. So that was his kind of contribution and everything like that to the Illuminati. Another prominent figure that we probably all know this person, maybe the, the last name was, is going to sound really familiar, but David Rockefeller. Uh, David was born was known for his foreign political connections and for striking secret deals behind closed doors. He was also known for his fortune, which was an estimated $3.3 billion, And then he died March uh, 27. March 2017. And then it was he was a <clears throat> he was a prominent figure because he had lots of money and he had lots of power. And again, he was making again apparently backdoor deals. Um <laughs> next person, uh Leo kind of touched on on this person too. Uh he kind of stole my thunder. I'm disappointed about it, but Queen Elizabeth the second um is believed to be a reptilian humanoid. But on top of that, um, supposedly she runs a cloning center where she replicates replicates celebrities to help fulfill the Illuminati's vision of a new world order because clones are obedient and they obey. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where this factory is. I haven't seen like any conspiracy theories be like it's below the castle and everything <laughs> like that. So. <laughs> It's That's easy to say, right? Because no one will be able to infiltrate the castle. Well, there have true. been there have been people who have come out and said, like, I go to a clone factory. I know I'm a clone because someone else who's a clone has seen me there, and they've seen all these other clones, and it was just so ridiculous. Look, I like to believe that this was just even too much for me. <laughs> I, crazy, yeah. Missy. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, it, I mean. <laughs> There's there's two things though. I, I I'd like to point out both what Rose said and then what Leo said too, though, is that Roe, you make a good point. If it was something where it was underneath, like where the queen lives, it would be hard to get to because who's gonna be able to get to it? But then also low or uh, low <laughs> Leo, not low. <laughs> hey, what's up, low? <laughs> but Leo, you had brought up that you could put it somewhere that no one would suspect, you know, maybe like Antarctica. Because, I mean, what was it? Um, I think we had brought this up during another one of our episodes. But 
there was a big meeting down in Antarctica with all these head figures. Was it you, Leo, who brought that up? Yeah, were they me. like a bunch? Of, yeah. Oh, Missy. It was mentioned, Missy, yeah. Yeah. A bunch of figures, like figureheads. <laughs> <laughs> I know we went back it and forth just... with it, but yeah, like yeah, a bunch of the just... people in power. What is it you do? Hug it out. <laughs> Listen, we're conjoined at the hip. We can't help it. <laughs> All the time. Yeah, it's true. Um, Trady, it's basically like nobody can fucking fight in Antarctica and we've got a secret base there and nobody can know what's there except for us. But basically, I- I'm pretty sure that's the exact wording of the treaty. With maybe oh, a few more sorry, sorry, I might have missed this, but Missy, who are they? Okay, like, they? Meetings? Oh, okay. Um, world leaders, uh, the Pope, but he, he's not called the Pope. I know he's not called that. Okay. George Bush was there. Al Gore was there. The Clintons were there. Uh, like all the prominent from every country. I don't, I don't really know the names of the figures in other countries because, um, not very well read on those subjects, but yeah, they were pretty much anyone, the who's who of running shit. That's all I've got to say about that. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. like one of the first and only times that like people of power from all over in all the different countries met up and was like, listen, Antarctica is off limits for everybody. Do we have an understanding? And everybody agreed to that for whatever reason, whether it's a secret base, a portal to Agartha, you know, the hollow earth, or mm. maybe there's just, I don't know, some kind of creature out there. We don't know. <laughs> but, all yeah. of the above. <laughs> it's right. locked. I have a- yeah, option D. <laughs> So you mean to tell me that they are disturbing the penguins? Oh. I don't like that. <laughs> the penguins are complicit. The, the penguins are complicit. The penguins are secret agents. So they wear their suits and everything. They're in on it. Those are the yeah. men in black. That makes sense. <laughs> That's oh it. my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, I think it goes as far as like even planes can't fly over like certain areas in Arctic in Antarctica. No. Yeah. Google Google Earth has a really clear picture of exactly what's there though, if you'll check it out. I'm being or sarcastic. There is it the real picture. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally being sarcastic. It's a blob of ice or or something. The last person that I'll bring up um is R- Jacob Rost Rothschild. I can't say it. Yeah. Roth, Roth, it's like saying Worcestershire Roth, Roth, Roth. Roth. I can't say it. Rothschild. Yeah. They, Rothschild. Rothschild. You can say it, Leo, because it has the word child in it. <laughs> <laughs> we need to ask them where they get the name from. <laughs> yeah. But he's a uh, he's a pretty um prominent person within the Illuminati, apparently, because he's um, what was it? He's he's a banker and he's worth billions. So yeah, I think he's short. up there with like Rockefeller or yep. the other one you mentioned that was doing behind yep. the uh, behind the scene business. Yep. So those are some prominent figures within uh, the Illuminati. Some ways to join. So if you want to, uh, I mean, Missy already <laughs> said she's doing it. So we'll find out. <laughs> right. We'll have an Illuminati member in our, in our ranks. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> but you can even look it up online, like prominent figures together, like Rothschild, Rockefeller, and them meeting with like the presidents and other people of power just casually meeting up. And it's like, why would why would they be meeting up? What are they like what the, can a banker the and a president have to discuss? Exactly. Money. 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 <laughs> yeah, how to destroy oh. it. <laughs> how to how to bring the economy down. <laughs> So uh, I have a question for you, Alex. I mean, the names that you just listed out, are, are they just, like, just mentioned somewhere or is it official? Have these people, uh, uh, you know, agreed no. that they are a part? I mean, obviously they wouldn't, but considering Illuminati is harmless and, you know, it works towards the benefit of mankind. Um, do these people <laughs> come out right and agree if questioned? And is it somewhere officially there that they are a part? So I think the last three that I mentioned, uh, Rockefeller, uh, Queens Elizabeth, and Worcestershire Shosh, that guy, <laughs> they, they all, they all, you know, were not a part of the Illuminati, blah, blah, blah. 
but the other ones in the like the 17 1800s baron albert yes. edward those ones yes were a part of it because obviously the society did exist at one point so those those people actually did or were a part of it um but the other ones deny being a part of it or having anything to do with it so yeah it makes sense right if if they only recruit the wealthy folks because if if there's some fishy business going on they would need someone who has deep pockets to get out of the situation that not people sense, like too. us yeah yeah I- <laughs> We won. <laughs> I need help if I get a speeding ticket. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, but I do know Missy. You covered one particular person in general, correct? Yeah, yeah. But he he links to. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. He he links to other people. Um, do you want me to start? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So John W. Warner the fourth. Uh, He's an author, a historian. I'm going off the top of my head. So he has a long history, or his family has a long history in the U.S. intelligence agencies. Um, So he comes from the Mellon family. I think his dad's Mellon and his mom is, I can't remember off the top of my head. But he says that his family is one of the wealthiest families in these bloodlines. And they reach all the way back to human creation. He says they were seated by Pleiadian aliens i know i know (laughs) hold on (laughs) and that they have been behind the scenes of some of the most powerful and influential people in u.s history so he also says that um going back to the seeding of humanity these alien gods all humans share this dna but the the 13 richest families have more of the dna because they they're inbred wait did I make that up? Did I just insert that? <laughs> no, I no, think, I think, I think you're right. They would I think have to be. That, that makes sense, right? If they've got the, yeah. If they've yeah. got like, yeah, okay. So <laughs> I'm like, here I am over here being like, is it, can you be racist to ancestral people? I don't even know if that's thing. I'm going to shut up and keep going. Okay. So, well, I, I, I do want to say, like, so if the, I guess if the 13 families were to just keep like, you know, staying within the 13 families, you know what I mean? Like if they don't go without, mm-hmm side that 13 families i think that'd be a way to keep it pure without actually inbreeding no, yeah it's still inbreeding. Or so, yeah it is still inbreeding but it's second <laughs> cousin stuff so you don't come out like with two noses or what you know what have True. you um so anyway he says that these these families they conspire with and against each other so it's 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 not just one faction it's it's oh, is it Game of Thrones all thing. of a sudden with, like yeah. political like <laughs> look i've got a i've got a link to his um youtube and we can put that in the show notes but um so some of the families want to enslave humanity and the other ones want to enlighten humanity and um basically they're behind everything and you know it's like well why should you believe john w warner the fourth but he is the son of a senator who was a republican for the state of virginia he's deceased now but he was also an American lawyer, a politician. Um, I think he served as Secretary of State. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pre- maybe no Secretary of the Navy. That's what it was. Um, so he's just he's just mega rich. He's like you know got fuck you money, and he says that like Paul Mellon, who was his father. He worked for the OSS, which is Office of Strategic Services. It was the precursor to the CIA, this OSS. And this was in World War II. And it it was initially based in Europe. Um, So he organized the collection of top secret Nazis, Nazis, however you want to say it, that um, reversed the technology of the UFOs. Um, And yeah, so he just goes into basically like, um, these people suck. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. They always have to tell you what they're going to do. They have to broadcast it before they do it or it won't work. Satanic rituals, Bohemian Grove, all that stuff. He says it's all true. And like with the Epstein stuff, he said that we don't we uncovered something there that we don't even fully understand, like how deep it goes. Um, yeah. So it, and he also says like the Illuminati is just like a catch-all phrase for these thirteen bloodlines, and that 
um, you can be outside of the bloodlines and join, but just, you have to be tapped on the shoulder. And I know there's more to it than that, but that's literally all I remember hearing him say. I'm like, tapped on the shoulder. Like, people tap me on the shoulder all the time. Now it's going to make me really uncomfortable. It must be like like code for like, you know, or like if you're, they're like, okay, we want, let's just say us, a, a part of the show, we're the Illuminati and we want to bring someone in. We like, we bring them here and then we tap them on the shoulder and then that's quote unquote they know <laughs> it's, it's like a, it's a secret handshake that's what that yeah is. yeah so um this john you know, tap... guy... oh, go ahead go ahead so, sorry missy so uh, sorry the tap on the shoulder took me right to queen elizabeth and you know when they knight someone they kind of <gasps> tap the sword oh. over the sh- shoulders oh. Leo, you got to do the thing. You got to do it. That was perfect. <laughs> That's really That's good. Actually, there. Yeah, that's actually true. Wait, wait, yeah. Where'd Leo go? <laughs> he, <went to> get <laughs> he just disappeared. <laughs> Someone snatched him up. Like, hey, there we go. <laughs> so really the last thing I have basically is he says, um, you know, it's, if you want to leave, you can leave. Well, According to this guy, you cannot leave. They will blackmail your ass. He says it's really easy. You just slip somebody a Mickey or a Minnie. Is it a Minnie or a Mickey? Doesn't matter. And they pass out, and you photograph that person in compromising positions. I guess um, before there were cameras, they would just get witnesses or whatever. But yeah, um, he said you can't leave. They they blackmail you to wow. to ruin your career. So why would you ever join? I guess that's the thing. Like, why would you? Power. Power, yeah. And but I think you, when people say, go ahead. I was going to say, but if you already have, like, plenty of wealth and, like, you're sitting fine and you're happy, why would you join? Like, well, I guess, like, brings it all the way it's back to, like, Elon Musk need to buy Twitter, dude. Like, there's uh, no rules to anything. That's true. That's true. <laughs> no one gives a fuck. I think it's a mental illness, like, to the, the need to acquire, like, Right, maybe it could be yeah, something maybe. dealing with like narcissism, just uh, no. yeah, the desire to be superior. Yeah, and that, this Mellon guy that says this too. He says that these people, like Klaus Schwab and these World Economic Forum people, they all look down on us and like we're less than. Um, our lives aren't as important because we weren't, we aren't in this upper echelon of like. Not not that they're stupid, but that like stupid money, you know, like lots of it. No. Yeah. And that's all I've got to say about that. I will say to add on to that, uh, I did hear about that too, where the Illuminati being part of like an alien species. I've also heard that they're like referred to as the draconian. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, the reptilians and that they have to buy like some kind of galactic law. They have to disclose to us humans or everyday people what they're going to do through the means of media, which I guess could tie back into like the whole Simpsons thing and movies and other media displaying things before it happens, quote unquote. Like that's them saying like, hey, this is what we're going to do. We can't tell you outright, but here's a hint. Pick it up. Well, every few years, some somebody unknown shows up on Ask Me Anything on Reddit and they're like, okay, I'm one of these 13 bloodlines. I'm here to deal with you little pricks. I don't care if you don't believe me. Ask me anything. And a lot of people are like, oh, you know, they don't even entertain that. They just answer questions. And it's really profound stuff. Like you wouldn't think that someone would just be sitting there making up, you know, like in their mom's basement, just hanging out and chilling and trolling people. Um, yeah. I'll send it for show notes. Well, I mean, final thoughts. Mm-hmm. What, what do we have, everybody? Let's, let's start with Ro. What, what do you think? What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean... Right from Game of Thrones incest to Alex, you saying keeping the blood pure, like hello, Lord Voldemort. No. Um, <laughs> it, I I think Illuminati does exist, um, and it may may not be as sinister as people think. I mean, I guess these conspiracies just kind of help them recruit more folks for their cause. Whatever it may be. Huh. Leo? I think it's a big cult. I think <laughs> they do this, like she said, that the all these conspiracies make it all the more attractive. And then you got people with wealth and money and power 
And it's just like, hey, you wealthy billionaire, you wanna you wanna come join this club? You wanna, no. you wanna come over here and and suck on the blood of children? You wanna live forever <laughs> and be immortal? Sorry, I, I just related uh in Illuminati with Scientology. I don't know whether that makes sense to you guys, but I that'll actually be something that we might have to look into if those two are related in any sort of way. <laughs> Missy, what do you think? Um, I just think that <laughs> nothing really. I was just thinking about this quote. It's like, is evil something you are or something you do? So basically, if you can be born into it and you can be recruited, like this John Mellon guy, you know, or was it John Mellon? I don't even know if it's John Mellon. Am I talking about a song now? Y'all are going to have to excuse me today. <laughs> no, that's Mellon Camp. Okay, so he was he was kind of born into the bloodline, but he's a good guy, but, or maybe he's controlled opposition. You just never know. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. No. <laughs> no clue. Tristan. Um, I think it's fun and easy and interesting to try to attach very complicated geopolitical problems to one group of people because it makes it all clean and nice and pretty. But I really like history and I like learning about how actual iron grip like societies function for a while. And no one ever knows what the fuck's going on anytime. I don't care how much power you have, what's happening. Like, I, I truly believe that, like, it's all just a bunch of backhanded chaos where even if there are secret groups, which there probably are a ton of them, most of them have their own agenda anyway. So any type of real collaboration between anybody in any practical sense, I think is stupid. And uh, I, I just I, I think that, of course, powerful people get together and talk about ways to better their power and better their station, because that's what normal fucking people do. That's just what you do. Mm -hmm. That's everybody does that. Um, so I don't think there's anything inherently nefarious or wrong with that. And I also think it's important to remember that I think a lot of these people that are in these groups, they aren't necessarily trying to do anything wrong. If you put yourself in that perspective and you were raised that way, and that's just how you are, because those people live in closed societies, like most people live in kind of closed societies around their own class or people or whoever is around them. Of course, their perspective is going to be completely different than ours. So we look at it as like they're trying to take over the world or do this. And all these people could have genuinely good intentions. It's just that's just the way they are, though. You know, like people in ancient times thought it was fine to go uh, – like raid villages and stuff like that, right? They thought that was a good thing. That was bringing honor to their tribe or whatever. If you're just raised that way, how the hell would you not? Like, that's just what you're going to think. Even with modern media and everything the way it is, people are still fucking crazy. Like, they're not different. There's just more information <laughs> for them. So I don't really think that there's any... I don't think there's any station behind any of that Illuminati stuff. I, I just think powerful people are just as stupid as the rest of us. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> it's so silly to think that there's some that there's some conspiracy to keep things from us when we're we're just fighting amongst ourselves. We're never gonna agree. So that yeah. like we're you know, we keep it from ourselves. Like we're the conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah, kinda. Mm. Um I actually was rereading so one of my favorite Kurt Vonnegut books, um uh The Sirens of Titan. And the actual first it. page starts with this beautiful uh Basically, the idea is humans were so obsessed with finding answers, right? Exploring, going out into space and finding what's out there, finding the meaning to everything until they actually got out into space and like actually started exploring it and realizing that it's just a black hole of nothing. So they had to look into themselves. And I feel like things like conspiracy yeah. theories and stuff yeah. like that follow that line where like you're so obsessed with finding answers or finding purpose or finding meaning to everything around you that you're just willing to attach all this crap to it where the actual answer is to just look at your fucking self. Yeah, there's a proverb about that. Like uh, when God created humans, he wanted to know where to hide this great secret. And he thought about it and thought about it. And he asked a bunch of different animals and they were like, one of them finally said, we'll hide it within the human because that's the last place they'll look. <laughs> huh. Pretty good. Deep. Yeah. Very deep. <laughs> Thank goodness. Seven <laughs> they hear I come. And then yeah. to kind of wrap this all up, it the Illuminati really is controlled by reptilian aliens. All right, that's all we got for the show. All right, so if you enjoyed what you just listened to, hit us up on all your favorite social media sites uh, like Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for a list of 
all the latest content that we have going on to see what the most up-to-date information of what's going to be coming forward with the show. And remember, we aren't looking for normal. We want stuff. That's effing weird. Hi there, my name is Chris. I'm the host of the Cult Film Companion Podcast. We are the home of movies that are off, under, and ahead of the cinematic radar. I'm a firm believer that a cult movie can come from any time period, any director, any movie studio, and covers a wide variety of genres, often within one single movie. It's all about the legacy that these movies have built up over time. Please tune into the Cult Film Companion Podcast, and remember to keep it cult. But don't drink the Kool-Aid, because it'll make you sick. Or kill you. Take care.